Region Europe is the international program of the University of Turin, pursuing a comprehensive knowledge of the European model of regional integration and of the EU as a global actor. The involvement of 45 guest lecturers coming from all across the world's most prestigious universities and institutions allows us to bring fresh and critical perspectives on crucial issues concerning European integration and the role of the EU in world affairs with a forward-looking approach. We want to introduce you to how the EU actually works from its beating heart, visiting its institutions and interacting with its actors. From its first edition, each year Region Europe has given the opportunity to more than 150 students coming from all over the world to gather and exchange views and experiences. Usually meshes uh, concept, long time formations, but they may change when certain conditions apply. For example, if new information in the periphery contradicts existing images of self and other. Uh, secondly, if this takes place in the other, or if it takes place uh, globally without involvement of the perceiving country or the other. In, there, is, there are also other conditions may apply, for example, if decision makers face it perceived as a potential decisive watershed or event, if there is a high degree of its strong emotions like fear or hate are attached to events. You in the information of the first century predicted the existing image of the European integration through a combination of factors. First, image change of the perceiving country, I mean, they are self-image change that would be an endogenous factor, and uh, also the other image and the global context also change. Those would be exogenous factors. Let's look at the images of the EU in Colombia and Peru. Even nowadays, Europe, uh, Colombia and Peru are members of Andean integration. Uh, the Andean group was formed in 1969, but in 1996 it was renamed Andean community. For the sake of simplicity, we are using Andean community through all the presentation, the same way that I am using uh, European Union, even for events before 1990. Now, the Andean community took two elements from the EU. The notion that the process of integration would move forward through stages that you all know, and the adoption of European integration institutions like the Commission and the Secretariat. Uh, the changes is uh, more
Balkans were in, in European ways, and it was also advice from European judges. Um, in fact, the ACC can. At the process persuasion and socialization because the decision was taken after repeated interactions with European officials and judges. Uh, legal transplants are important because they are uh, best practices and import foreign names. as a model it is no rita Yes. No, Rita, I have to interrupt you because uh, it is uh, yes. it is not possible for us to hear you. So we I'm can sorry. so we hear a word here and a word there, but we cannot understand uh, uh, your sentences uh, yeah, and so on. Oh, so. I don't know. I, I really don't know how to fix it uh, because the problem is the connection, uh, I guess. Uh, because you know, we cannot. Uh, uh, I don't know because we cannot uh, we cannot understand the meaning of what you are saying. So it is impossible. It is impossible for us to you know to f to follow your presentation and uh, and to understand its meaning. That, that's the problem. I don't know what to do. Um, honestly, I could just uh, advise you to to change your device because or it is the connection. Or it could be that your computer is not working, like you have low bandwidth or local computer conditions, like slow, slow CPU or RAM. So it could be a problem of your Let computer. Let me check my other device. Maybe you could try and switch it, but if you don't have your smartphone, you have a tablet or another computer. It's like, wait a minute. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, but it sounds better or is it all chopped up? 
No, it seems to be better. Uh, let me try share now. Okay. Yes. Okay. What about now? Yeah, yeah, in the nineties. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, if possible, I I would ask you to um, to to restart your presentation because uh, okay. you know. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. It. I'm sorry, Rita. That's okay. That's okay. Um. Well, as the the origin or the objective of this presentation is to explain the endogenous and exogenous factors in the change of image of the uh, European Union. Uh, I will start around here saying that um, though images are usually lasting elements in international relations, sometimes we do have fixed images of the other, they change under certain conditions. Uh, the most important of them are when new information in the perceiving country contradicts existing images of self and other. Uh, when the same process takes place in the other, or globally, that is, without involvement of the perceiving country or the other. Um, there may also be changes in images when decision makers face a watershed-like situation, when everything seems to be changing at the same time. Or if there is a high degree of international uncertainty, or if a strong emotions like fear and shame are attached to events. And I think that our case study today fits the first condition. Information in the 21st century contradicted the existing image of the EU through a combination of factors. On one side, um, the self-image change of the perceiving country, that would be an endogenous factor, and changes in the uh, images of the other and the global context, those would be exogenous factors. If we look at the images of Colombia and Peru, we found that these are still members of the Andean integration process. Uh, the Andean group was formed in 1969 and renamed the Andean community in 1996. Uh, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to be using Andean community through all the presentation, the same way that I use European Union before and after 1992. Now, the Andean community followed the EU model on two aspects. The notion that the integration process would move forward through stages that you all know, and the adoption of European integration institutions such as the Commission and Secretariat. In 1987, there was a big change and some new institutions like the Andean Parliament, the Court of Justice, and the Advisory Councils on Social and Economic Issues were added. And they were explicitly added with the aim of making the AC more flexible, more democratic, and along the lines of the European communities. And a good example of the influence of the EU and the role model of the EU is the Andean Court of Justice. As an um, institution 
explicitly modeled on the European Court of Justice. And this was done by INTAL, that's the Instituto de Integración Latinoamericana, an uh, Inter-American Development Bank Agency, uh, whose consultants have been educated in European universities and also convened a conference uh, with the participation of European judges. So we can say that the ACG was really a legal transplant from an Europe of an European institution. Uh, through a persuasion of both, sorry, through a process of both persuasion and socialization, because the decision was taken after interactions with Europe European officials and judges. Now, uh, this is important because legal transplants usually try to emulate best practices uh, into a context in which actors have lost confidence in local laws and institutions. So this is a clear example of the EU role as a model for DAC. In the 1990s, there were some slight changes, but the most important finding is Seligson, who found a strong correlation between a positive opinion of the EU and support for Latin American integration. While only one third of respondents with a negative opinion of the EU supported economic integration in Latin America. Another uh, element that has been um, established as helping change the positive image of the EU in Andean nations is the system of generalized preferences for drugs that was established to um, affect the illicit drugs production and trafficking in Andean nations. And uh, though these programs total a huge amount of euros between 1990 and 2005, um, in the receiving countries, they were perceived as a failure because they concentrated on reducing the supply of drugs without attacking the social and economic roots of the problem. Let, let us look now in Mexico. We have, have rebuy, review a number of surveys down like the Latin barometer of 1996 and found that Mexico had the weakest level of support for regional integration in general in Latin America. And that almost 40% of respondents opposed integration with Latin America. Uh, that's kind of strange because at that time, Mexico had already signed the Group of Three Free Trade Agreement with Colombia and Venezuela and was negotiating bilateral uh, economic agreements with most Latin American nations. Anyway, as none of those agreements follow the EU integration model, it is not clear if opposition to integration was associated or not uh, with rejection of the European model. So this is inconclusive. In the 2000s, we found um, that only 32% of Mexicans had a positive perception of the EU but they did have more knowledge about integration. Uh, regarding this finding, Fioramanti has claimed that in the 1990s, the, the EU had enjoyed the so-called halo effect. You don't know someone, but the first image is positive and you see it uh, optimistic, optimistically. But um, as knowledge grew, that positive effect disappear. At the beginning of the 2010s, 
uh, positive elements in the studies of the EU image in Mexico were more knowledge of the EU and regional integration, and also uh, more emphasis on its normative or moral power in comparison to the US. That's a positive trait. But on the negative side, the EU-Mexico agreement of 1998 had not lived up to the expectation of Mexican business. So uh, business elite had a negative uh, image of European integration. And also European position on agricultural subsidies in the Doha round had further hurt its image. Let us look at Chile. In the 1990s, uh, Chile had been very active in trade diplomacy and negotiated North-South and South-South bilateral agreements with almost any country. And its elites were very clear that the um, axis of world trade had moved from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. In the 2000s, Chile attempted to revive links with Latin America, but refused to enter at full membership in Mercosur and just settled for associated membership in order to retain autonomy in commercial policy. because it had attracted high flows of European foreign investment to Chile. But the crisis of 2008, those investments fell behind. Um, some is that even before 2008, there was a skeptical climate about Chilean-EU relations due to the fact that Europe was paying more attention to widening to the widening process to Central and Eastern Europe and also the loss of import European market Chile during the commodities exporting boom of those years. Um, but on the other side there was an effect of the EU-Chilean agreement because uh, some of the values that the European integration wanted to spread were well received in Chile, not through changes in governmental regulation or uh, establishing supranational institution, but through the establishment of more informal networks and the adoption of international standards such as the ISO by Chilean business. So it was done, uh, it was, let's say, um, European values were spread through an adoption of um, a not an institutional supranational way. By the 2010s, the global financial crisis and the political polarization of the Latin American context had led Chile to a rapprochement with the EU and to the negotiation of the Pacific Alliance. At the CELAC EU summit meeting in 2013, Chile sided with the EU uh, to highlight the need for legal security and clear rules of the game if more cooperation between both regions uh, was called for. And in the Pacific Alliance, Chile stressed pragmatism, promotion of a small and medium-sized business, and the possibility of becoming a bridge between Asia-Pacific and South America. If we look now at the whole group, we found that uh, when Colombia, Chile, Mexico, and Peru formed the PA, the new group deviated from most Latin American regional groups by following an institutional format closer to that of, of Asian. And we did a review of PA 
summit meetings until 19, uh, 2019 and found that they never mentioned the EU, but most of them declared the group interest in promoting trade with Asia Pacific. Regarding the um, Asian institutional framework, the most important decision-making uh, body is the Standing Committee of Foreign Ministers, very similar to the committee or uh, the meetings of foreign and trade ministers of the alliance. And decisions are made by consensus. Um, let's go on from here. Um, in the case, uh, when we look at similarities with uh, between the Pacific Alliance and ASEAN, we found that Mexico and Chile considered the growth of their trade and foreign investment attraction associated to changes in global context and to their foreign policy decisions rather to, than to belonging to a regional group. And that's similar because in ASEAN, the decision not to follow the EU model also was related to the fact that in the 1980s and the beginning of the 1990s, um, Southeast Asian countries uh, noticed that their trade and their uh, economic growth had increased in relations with Australia, South Korea, and, and even among them, without the need to sign any regional group in. So, uh, we can really say that at 2012, members of DPA prefer to cooperate with each other without yielding their national sovereignty. So while, uh, for example, EU Customs Union need common policies and supranational bodies, the PA is a free trade area with additional cooperation functions, like in education and so on. This is a very sketching comparison of both uh, the institutional makeup of both in, of the PA and Asian. But you can see very fast here, uh, Asian small secretariat, rotating annual presidents, annual rotating president and secretariat, decision making by consensus, a uh, council of trained at foreign ministers and uh, ministers meetings. Okay, so the first important, let's say, finding when we uh, introduce our reflections um, before, we found that the images that actors have an, an, of another usually say more about the images of the real other. So, See a new perception of the self that is an endogenous factor in Pacific Alliance member nations. And that change of self perception came about at the end of the development model. This economic success, relative success, obviously help breed self-confidence in their political and business leadership, especially in Chile and Mexico, but also in Colombia and Peru. If we look at the relative change of position of each country, we see that at the end of the 20th century, since the 1970s, Chile had been under a military dictatorship that government from big actors of the international system, including the European Union. But after 1990, uh, a succession of democratic administration, the export-led development model adopted before. 
By 2010, Chile was an emergent economy, had enjoyed a steady economic growth and political stability without being a member of any regional integration group, and had trade treaties with the US, the EU, and China, besides having entered the OECD. If we look at Mexico, uh, during the 20th century or most of it, Mexico had been ruled by the same dominant party visit by clientelism. Since in 2000, there was the first change of government after a democratic campaign, and Mexico began a period of electoral alternation of parties in government. Sorry. <clears throat> During the 2000s, the commodities boom helped Mexico to become a member of the Emergent Economies Club and reinforce the feeling of its political and economic elites that regional integration, integration following the EU model was unnecessary to achieve economic growth. Let's see Colombia. Well, the negative image of Colombia as a country rife with guerrilla warfare and illegal drugs has lasted into the 21st century, but began to change after peace talks between the government and the FARC. International actors, however, knew that the Colombian administration was participating in pre-negotiations with rebel groups since the early 2010. And the peace process Help strengthen the consensus between government regarding the need to project a better image of Colombia by associating with successful economies, that is Chile and Mexico, especially after Venezuela's exit from the Andean community in 2006 had left Colombia outside its main exporting market. In Peru, most of the 20th century witnessed long periods of authoritarian rule. A narrow voting franchise until 1979 and the exclusion of popular political movements. Uh, during the 1980s, the external debt crisis and the threat of guerrilla movements helped the authoritarian regime of Alberto Fujimori to reach power between 1990 and 2001. Those years, through those years, Peru left the Andean community. But when it rejoined the group in the 2000s, it rejoined only the Andean Free Trade Zone and not its customs union something that did not prevent Peru from reaping economic benefits from trade and foreign investment during the exporting boom. In summary, by 2012, all four PA member nations enjoyed an improved image in comparison with the last quarter of the 20th century. Mexico, Chile and partially Peru had achieved and maintained economic growth and relative political stability without being members of an EU-type regional grouping. And Colombian trade limitations in Venezuela had increased it, its interest in diversifying trade options outside the Andean community. So these would be the endogenous factors that explain the changing image of the EU among members of the Pacific nations. Now, now, regarding external factors, obviously the financial crisis of 2008, the movement of the world trade axis from the Atlantic to the Pacific, and the slackening of the Chinese demand of commodities, made the four governments growth and diversify their external links. And by that time, the self-image of the EU 
had been tarnished by the financial banking and debt crisis and But after the the positive partnership with the European Union, for example, deepening uh, by regional links to foster the PA global position, inclusion of all members in the OEC, and reactivation of the WTO. It means that the EU positive image has not potential continues to attract interest in PA and in Latin America. On the other, normative aspects on climate change, human rights, transparency, in importance in our region. But the notion that the international integration institutional terms has been discarded by the PA. Regardless, EU became a role model for integration due to its uh, actual achievements in economics and politics, or due to its promises as Fioramanti claims, the EU image in PA member nations has changed from a role model toward a partner with common economic interests and value diplomacy attraction. This change can be linked to the PA and the EU, and to changes in the global context. So, a final reflection would be that future endogenous and exogenous changes at the international level can accelerate, modify, or create new links between them. Thank you very much. Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay, so, so thank you very much, uh, Professor Giacalone. And now, as usual, uh, the floor is open to uh, your questions uh, and, uh, and uh, to your comments. Um, <clears throat> and um, so, um, um, I think that uh, um, so we are not uh, so expert um, in Europe, uh, so of course in region Europe, but in Europe uh, in general, um, on the um, Pacific Alliance. Okay. And, uh, and it would be interesting it would, um, to understand, uh, for example, um, uh, what uh, are the drivers of... Uh, you know the um, the joining uh, that is why um, the for example countries uh, uh, such as uh, Peru and Colombia decided to um, to join an organization uh, like uh, the the Pacific Alliance, which is uh, so far from the European model, considering that uh, the uh, Andean community um, was conceived as very close institutionally to the European Union. So what are the drivers of this behavior uh, for Chile and, uh, no, sorry for Chile, for uh, Colombia and Peru? Okay, okay. Thank you, Giovanni. Uh, yes, uh, the EU, the AC was a close model, but I would say that one of the drivers, especially for Colombia and Peru, was disappointment. I mean, mm. by 2000, they have had almost 40 years, or at least more than 30 years, national integration following the European model and had not achieved many things. 
And mm. there is also, I talk about Another important drive is two. Practically split two. I mean, Bolivia and Ecuador, Bolivia and Ecuador became simultaneously members of the ALBA hmm? mm -hmm. under Venezuelan direction, and Colombia and Peru felt isolated within the AC mm -hmm. and affected in their exports because with Venezuela getting out, most of their uh, manufacturing options. On the other half, uh, I hope no. that makes it clear yeah. for Colombia and Peru. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, the problem is that we can, we could not hear you very well. So so, so I oh, think sorry. that we missed uh, you we you we missed uh, your answer quite uh, quite completely or nearly completely. Uh, yeah, so if you could repeat I'm sorry Rita but you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was saying two drivers, two drivers from yes. Colombia and Peru. Disappointment with the the the, the results a uh, polarization that Mm -hmm. Because after Venezuela left the agreement, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Bolivia and Ecuador became members of ALBA following the ideological position of Venezuela. And Colombia and Peru felt isolated within the AC and also lost their uh, most important exporting market that was Venezuela within the Andean community. So they switched, they have to look for other options outside. Now, uh, in fact, the Pacific Alliance was originally proposed by Peru. Mm. So the original uh, idea came uh, from these two countries, from the Andean countries that felt this internal problem, they call into Chile and Mexico to join them. And at that moment, because of the global crisis and so on, they found a favorable position in the, govern in the Chilean Mexican government. And that's it. So and uh, um, so it is also so here. Okay, so there is a question from Eleonora, so which which I I'm going to report uh, to you. Um, so Eleonora uh, Eleonora says, uh, Professor, if I have understood well, European Union is not anymore considered as a model from both leading countries in Latin America and in Asia. In your opinion, is it dismissing the theory that the future of, world, of the world will be regionalism? Uh, well, that's a very good question, Eleonora. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't have my crystal ball. <laughs> um, uh, it's a yes answer because uh, I'm afraid, well, afraid not. economic terms, I doubt that there will be a world of regionalisms like this respect some years ago. Sorry, Rita. Again, do I? Uh, yeah. uh, okay. <laughs> no. Sorry. Yeah, I have a. I mean, I have a dual answer. On one side, yeah. I think that regions are going to be more important in economic terms, in trade, mm. um, productive um, chains, and so on. 
But on the other hand, I'm not sure that um, regional, that a world of regions, that means in political terms or world system or international system terms, uh, will be due at least very soon. I mean, that would be, uh, my answer to that would be negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is also interesting to, uh, you know, to the, the case the, the the case of the Andean community because uh, um, so of course as you know the European Union thought in the past that uh, the world would would evolve along uh, along regionalist lines and uh, along. Uh, and according to the European Union model, and so the the uh, the Andean community, the Andean community was an example of uh, replicating the European model in some way. Because if I remember well, the Andean community, for example, um, uh, so the, the 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 legal acts of the um, even the legal acts uh, of the European Community resembled in some way the legal acts of the European Union, the decisions, uh, regulations, uh, and so on. So the names of the acts uh, of of um, so um, it is interesting to um, to understand, uh, you know, uh, so why the Andean Community failed in your opinion and why this european model in the european community within the european community failed so what do you think about this um well i don't know about the failure within the <laughs> i mean of the eu in the eu which i don't think it has failed but regarding the ac the problem yeah. was the lack of implementation mm. i mean most of these regulations were in paper and um, with time there was a, a kind of optimism that would be future but after more than 30 years you don't have this future horizon anymore i mean time has gone by and countries uh, lack implementation of decisions um, so everything comes kind of crumbling down. So I talk about disappointment because I think the promise of the Andean community was really not achieved in reality. Hmm. And in your opinion, uh, what is the, the role, for example, of uh, bilateral agreements uh, between uh, the European Union on the one hand and, uh, um, and uh, Peru and, uh, for example, yeah. on the other, and Colombia. In, uh, yeah, and Colombia, but maybe there is also a bilateral agreement with Peru, right, or not? Yeah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So with Peru and Colombia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, uh, w what is the role of these bilateral agreements uh, um, in the failure of uh, the Andean community? Because normally, you know, the, the, so the European Union likes very much to establish interregional relations and interregional uh, agreements, for example, you know, between the EU and Mercosur, between the EU and the Indian community, and so on. But the, so at a certain time, um, the European Union decided to go bilateral. And so, in your opinion, what is the, the, the impact of this decision uh, in the failure of uh, the Indian community, if any, of course? Uh, e uh, yes, there is, um, there is an impact of the fact that uh, in the mid-20s, uh, uh, on the mid, sorry, on the mid-2000s, uh, the EU accepted to negotiate uh, bilateral trade treaties or association treaties with Colombia and Venezuela uh, in full group. Uh, mm. But the decision to do so was forced by the AC. I mean, it, it mm. not come spontaneously from the EU. Um, why? Because Bolivia and Ecuador uh, created so many, um, let's say, obstacles, put so many obstacles on the group-to-group -group or interregional mm. 
uh, negotiations and Bolivia went out of it, left the negotiation, that finally the EU could only negotiate bilaterally uh. with Colombia and Peru. But that had an impact, obviously, in the AC because it reinforced the notion that integration mm -hmm. in the AC was not necessary to get to diversify uh, the Colombian and Peruvian markets or export markets. Mm. No, there are um, some authors uh, uh, that uh, uh, the, who who suspect that the European Union um, uh, decided to uh, establish bilateral relations uh, with uh, these two countries in order to, you know, uh, to impose to impose of them the so-called uh, Singapore issues. No, uh, that is, for example, the liberalization. Uh, um, services, the, services, yes, yeah. services, public public procurement, uh, yeah. and so on and so forth. Which which uh, the Andean community was not able uh, or was not willing to to negotiate with the EU. And so the same uh, the same was true, for example, um, um, for the relations between uh, uh, the European Union and some African countries. Or and so on and so forth. So, uh, what do you? So, how how do you see this this uh, this issue? Okay. Yeah. Regarding uh, regarding the WTO plus uh, measures like public mm -hmm. procurement services and so on, obviously there was a split within the AC. Mm -hmm. With Bolivia and Ecuador again rejecting them, and Colombia and Peru, who had more uh, open trade uh, models of economic development, ready to incorporate them. Um, but uh, remember that later on, Ecuador uh, moved out of that position and restarted its negotiations with the EU. So finally, only Bolivia was the one that was left out of any uh, incorporation of these decisions. So yeah, this is a, a real issue uh, in most countries in Latin America at this time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know whether there are questions uh, from students. So. Um, so let's see uh, what happens. Yes, I'd like to pose a more generic question, if I may. Okay, Tiziana, please take the mic. Oh, or, um, I'm sorry, Rita, is it possible? So do you like uh, to hear um, and to listen to questions directly from, from students? Or, or do yeah, you if they to... are short. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. If they okay. are short. <laughs> okay, so please take the mic. Good evening. I hope I won't make everything collapse uh, by turning on the camera. Um, I, <laughs> as an Italian, I feel that uh, South America is an area of the world that we really don't understand much. Uh, um, and it's often understood uh, through stereotypes uh, or an ethnocentric view um, and something that, uh, like, mm, didn't play a very relevant role in history and i know it's completely false but it's uh, you know the common sense narrative around this area of the world so i was wondering uh, um, uh, about this perception that sometimes uh, uh, leads to a very poor understanding of uh, the geopolitics and economy of the area um, if it's the same i mean uh, on, from the other side, if uh, uh, there are stereotypes about Europe or misunderstandings about Europe uh, that can have an impact on the relationship between different areas of the world. Sorry for okay. the weird question. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Siana. Um, I think I have your name right. Yeah, okay. Um, let's say that perception 
your question is about perception, which is a wider subject. I mean, uh, perception includes the process and the fire product that's the image. Uh, yeah, there are mutual perceptions and perceptions of Europe in Latin America. Now, I think that there are not so, ma so many stereotypes about the EU as uh, national stereotypes of individual nations, European nations. You have a stereotype of Germans, we, sorry, let's reshape it. We do have stereotypes or generally public Italians, in South America uh, has stereotypes of Germans, of British, of French, yeah. more than a stereotype of the EU. What mm. we do have is a perception of the EU as an area with an economic, um, financial potential and reality also. It's not just something in the future, some sh something that exists now and that attracts our attention because what are the needs in South America? We need capital, we need exporting markets, we need technology. So technology transfer is another positive trade that we can get from the EU. Now, on the other hand, perception is marred in South America because um, most of the uh, exports from the area, besides being minerals, are uh, agro-food products. And with all the European protection of agricultural subsidies and so on, in global trade negotiations, that, um, let's say, creates a bad feeling about the EU. I mean, uh, so that's a negative element. So perception of the EU uh, is not a stereotype yet. Uh, it's not fixed, hard to change, but it has both positive and negative elements. And I hope uh, I, I, answer your I have answered your question. Thank you. Yes, so um, so um, I have another question about the U.S. influence on the U.S. Uh, on, uh, on the yes, the U.S. influence on uh, the Pacific Island, um, uh, the Pacific Alliance, uh, sorry, countries, uh, and uh, um, their relations uh, uh, with the European Union. That is, uh, that is. Um, of course, uh, so the influ influence uh, of the United States uh, maybe has been very, uh, very strong uh, on these countries, right? So in the over, of course, uh, over the, the the whole Latin America, but over these countries uh, in particular. Mm. And so, um, so what do you think? Uh, what do you think um, um, will change uh, with the new? Uh, with the new uh, president of the United States, that is uh, what uh, um, the impact of the new president of the new president of and of uh, his, his new uh, foreign policy will be on uh, regional integration processes, for example, uh, in Latin America. Uh. <laughs> Well, Giovanni, that's a tough question. <laughs> yeah, it is okay. yes, it is tough, but you know, so because we know very well, for example, that uh, that Trump uh, exerted a kind of uh, divisive, uh, you know, pressure um, over uh, over uh, Latin American countries, but also over over um, over European countries as well. So, so what do you think? What do you think uh, can change in the future? Okay. Well, well, uh, I do not expect big changes. I do not expect big changes. Probably gradual ones in the relationship between the U.S. and Latin America, but it's certainly uh, hope or uh, a lessening 
the protectionism and for Latin, uh, oh, sorry of the Pacific Alliance with Mexico being a Uh, in that uh, global value chains are going to be shortened after the this that may uh, that PA countries can get linked business linked to uh, chains with the US but also with the European Union I'm sorry did you hear me? Yes, yes. Now, yes. Okay. Mm, 50 per, 50% we 50% okay, well, we can say. To make it short, to make it short, I mean, uh with yeah. the short with global value chains get shortened after the pandemic the actual pandemic of COVID-19, the expectation in Latin America is that PA nations can just get linked to value chains with Mexico and with the US and also with the EU. We, we are looking at both possibilities. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Sorry. Okay. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Uh, so let's see if there are any other questions from from students. So I'm sorry that uh, the connection made, uh, you know, things a little bit difficult and um, maybe the comprehension by, by, uh, by, by students a little bit more difficult. And um, so let's see. So okay. So if there are if there aren't any question, if there aren't any question, I think we could. Uh, okay. So I don't see any any question uh, on the chat. Uh, in, and so uh, Rita, I would uh, like to thank you very much for your presentation and. Um, Yes, and I'm sorry for for this inconvenience, but you know we are very we are very very far. So uh, you are in Calgary, and uh, there is uh, there isn't much snow. Uh, you told me, <laughs> and yeah, and so um, so of course uh, things a little bit difficult. So okay, so thank you very much, uh, Professor Giacalone, for uh, for joining uh, for joining Region Europe uh, for joining this program. I will I will try, of course, uh, to bring you to Torino so that we could we we, we don't have uh, these uh, connection problems, uh, and um, and we can speak we can speak freely, and. Um, yeah, and uh, discuss uh, a little bit better. Okay, so so thank you very much again, and thank you very much, students, for joining this uh, this lecture. Um, and uh, thank okay, uh, uh, thank you, Giovanni. Thank you, the uh, program uh, Università degli Studi di Torino. Di Torino all the students and I'm looking forward to meet all of you in person someday in the future when things get better. Okay. Meanwhile, good luck and take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Take Thank care. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.